Time now for Table Talk as we welcome in John Jastrzemski and John Harper. And, fellas, gave away is the perfect way to sum up this loss. So, Harp, how much blame does Buck Showalter deserve for not going to Robertson in the eighth? Well, let's start. It has to start with Beatty, as, as Todd, you hear Todd say. Look, he's a young kid, but he's got to make that play. Uh, and then the, the secondary thing is, bottom line is, they don't have enough good relievers, and that's on Billy Eplin more than Buck. But with all that said, it's a tough call for Buck because if Adamino isn't available, as he said, then it's a tough call. When are you, you going to use Robertson? But Adamino apparently has told, told people that he was available, so who knows about that. My issue there is I think you've got to be ready. Once you see the lefty getting in trouble, the kid loading the bases, you've got to have you got to be prepared for that. Managers always talk about being prepared for the worst-case scenario. In that case, that's when Robertson, you've got to use Robertson there because much better chance of him getting out of there than Brigham, even though, again, Beatty makes the play, he's out. But I just think you've you got to take your chance. You've got to get to the ninth. You can't always we, – I've gotten, we've gotten on Buck before this year about worrying about the next day, the next day. In this case, it's the next inning, next inning. You, sometimes you just got to get there. Maybe if they get through the eighth, they score a couple more runs, who knows. But I think that is the biggest issue of Buck. He, just a little more – he's got to manage with more urgency than he's showing. The urgency not there. To your point, Harp, when this game is unraveling in the bottom half of the eighth inning, this is a game you got to win. You need to go and win a series. You need to start generating some momentum. That's where David Robertson's got to come in. Todd nailed it, though. Brett Beatty is the biggest culprit here. That's a play that has to be made. If we're talking about Brett Beatty doing his job, we're talking about a double play. You're talking about the end of the inning. And then, of course, it sets up beautifully for David Robertson to go and pitch in the ninth inning. So, yeah, I didn't like the idea that you didn't see Robertson there when his base is loaded, and it's an opportunity for him to go and be the fireman. But Brett Beatty has to do his job, and Eamon, once again, the Mets continue to invent ways to lose. They make mistakes, they play sloppy baseball over and over again. Just one Harper. more thing. That kid Josh Walker, he really shouldn't be even be in the game at that point. It, Buck used Rayleigh in a fr- a five, with a 5-1 deficit Friday night. When you've got so few relievers, you, cannot, you can't spend those guys in low leverage situations. Rayleigh should have been in that game, and then I think it's probably not an issue any of it. Yeah, stuff. you talk about inventing ways to lose a game. Twelfth time they've lost when scoring six or more runs. Worse than baseball. That's just unfathomable. But okay, Harp, you mentioned that Rayleigh's unavailable. You know Drew Smith's uh, suspended. So why are you so quick to take Carlos Carrasco out after four innings? That's a fair question. <laughs> my, res- I my, know response, gonna... my response to you via text, I probably shouldn't say no. Carrasco, look, you, can't, you can't trust Carrasco. That's the problem. He, you know, it looks like every inning he's, he's living on the edge as far as getting through the inning. You know, his pitch count was up there. He's already, he'd already thrown 78 pitches. He's lucky to, you know, you're thinking, you're, you're even getting to four innings. I was thinking, take him out there. I wasn't aware those guys weren't available. But in that case, it's a fair question if you've got to stretch that many relievers through that many innings. See, I think that's the point, right? Like, if you don't have Adovino and you don't have Raley, you got to get more out of your starter. Now, it's not like Carlos Carrasco, though, is knocking anybody's socks no, off with the way he threw the ball today. So I'm not sure could... he would have gotten through the fifth if he No, I don't think there. so either, especially with the way he was laboring today. And that continues to be a problem for the Mets. They're clearly short guys in the bullpen. With Edwin Diaz being out, you're seeing the ripple effects. Robertson's up in a spot. Adovino's up in a spot. It's like this trickle-down effect. But if you're not getting length out of your starting pitchers, the Mets don't have the underbelly of the bullpen. They don't have guys that so can go So then that goes back to Harp's point that this is on Billy Epler well, for not is. taking care of the but bullpen. But you know what, though? It's also on the past regimes within the New York Mets that have depleted the pitching stock across the board here with short-sighted moves. There were more guys to sign out there. Remember, Billy Epler said he wanted optionable guys that he could send up and down so he'd have more uh, flexibility in the pen, which is a nice theory, but it doesn't work if you don't have anybody performing. Now now they got a lot of guys that they claimed off waivers to fill in those spots in the pen. Quickly, J.J., because you have the pulse of the Met fan on your podcast here, how would you describe the flip of the relationship between the Met fan and Buck Showalter from 2022 to 2023? Polar opposite. Buck Showalter was the toast in New York City. Yeah. I mean, he'd go into a bar, everybody pay for his drinks, everybody pay for his meal. Now the Met fan can't stand Buck. Hey, that's New York, baby.